So, I put all my plagues and cooldowns and shit. Okay, now death and decay and... What? Now I just score strike and... Epidemic and... <laughs> Holy fucking shit! We apologize to our viewers for this colorful and explicit use of language. What we meant by that was... Holy fuck! No... Unholy is outrageous. So, yeah, I'm guessing now you want the talents, gear, essences, rotation, and a lot more. Well, since I, because we have a lot of work to do. Just to put it out there, Unholy is performing pretty well in raids and dungeons and even has some more intricate and niche options to the builds we will be suggesting. However, we will keep things simple and straightforward so you can pick up the spec. Because even with our recommendations, people have been using them to clear mythic bosses and keys. Vegeta, what does the scouter say about his key level? It's over 20 plus. And what the fuck? On the first row, you want to take all will serve when raiding. The talent will make your raise dead skill that gives you a ghoul friend to bring his best bud in the run. He is a bit bony, but when single target is concerned, he thinks all the bosses owe him money, so he will smash bosses with the fury of a bankrupt nerd. For dungeons, take Infected Claws instead. This makes your ghoul's claw ability apply a festering wound with a 30% chance of occurrence. This performs better in dungeons instead of raids because you will be working at using festering wounds as your AoE gasoline and by bursting them, you essentially light up the fire. <sighs> You'll see. In the rotation, baby! On the second row in raids, take Ebon Fever. Virulent Plague is one of your strongest damage dealer in single target and AoE, especially with this one particular talent. In Mythics, you definitely want Bursting Sores. This gives your Bursting Wounds mechanic an AoE component and seeing as how you will want to burst the wounds in Death and Decay, you will essentially have the talent applied to all the targets that have wounds and are in your Death and Decay by just pressing one single Scorch Strike. <laughs> Crazy, huh? <sighs> you haven't even seen half of it. Next up is one of the Utility slash CC rows. Raids leave little in the ways of CC because Blizzard doesn't like it very much, so Asphyxiate is the one that will do the most for you and this only works on certain adds. It can work in dungeons as well, but better than that is Grip of the Dead, keeping mobs in your Death and Decay for longer. Because you want them to be in your Death and Decay forever and ever and ever and ever and if they can stay there even a bit longer, that would be nice. Next up is a rune generation talent row, and the default pick here is Soul Reaper. This gives you a bit of control over when you get more runes back, and this matters in single target a lot more, but more than that it matters in dungeons and AoE environments even a lot more, which we will go over in detail in the rotation section. On very high keys with very large pools, Pestilent Pustules is probably better, but if you are starting your unholy journey, we recommend sticking with Soul Reaper for now. The fifth row is a survivability row, which I guess we can call utility anyway. Here, actually, all three are valid, but each one solves a different problem. By default, and especially in raids, take Wraith Walk. Boss mechanics can be excruciatingly punishing for specs that have very low mobility, and we can argue that Death Knights have the lowest of them all. Traversing from point A to point B will be instrumental in maintaining uptime on your targets. In dungeons, however, bosses won't force you too much to move and Death Pact will be a better choice. Death Pact essentially gives you a big chunk of HP back that will absorb incoming healing as well. This will be an OH SHIT button since mythics are like that. Sixth row is yet another row with a few options, although I feel Epidemic to be the go-to for all situations. It's a very good spell to use when in AoE since the entire row basically focuses on certain aspects of your AoE mechanics. Also, as an FYI, this is the only runic spender Unholy has to deal AoE damage, otherwise you're going to be stuck with Death Quill, which is only better against one target, only. 
Pestilence seems to be used in very high keys, which affects very, very large pools meant to die in one Death and Decay window. Last Row, unfortunately, has only one viable and functional option, which is Unholy Frenzy. The pick essentially boosts your haste by 20%, which is amazing nonetheless, but the real part is the fact that it applies Festering Wounds with a 20% haste on top of it, of course. The skill is amazing in single target, but it will shine in AoE. We talked about AoE quite a bit because really, you just need to enable those notifications if you're subbed and you like our content. What? <laughs> that was a smooth transition if you ask me, and really, you didn't even see me plugging it in. Hey. Quickly, go to stats before YouTube demonetizes the video! As always, we get a lot of comments with differing opinions about specific things we recommend. That's not because what we're saying is wrong, it's more often than not correct, but the thing is, BFA, man, you just have to sim to get the correct answer. We will give you a frame of reference which can still work everywhere in the game, but won't give you that 1% extra damage on the meters for some sweet parses. As such, the general stat priority is haste first, with crit and verse afterwards, and strength being at the very bottom. That doesn't mean you can ignore eye level, because eye level still gives you a larger pool of stats, even if not the most ideal. The stats are, thankfully, not too far apart where it would be okay for you to sack eye levels. As an example, here are two of my personal stat sims. The one on top is the single target priority, while the other one is a cheeseburger. Even if you're fighting a raid boss in single target or eating a cheeseburger, the stats seem to be similar and looking at high logs, most unholy DKs will favor crit over haste. But again, this is because of how stats scale and how gear gets. You don't need to copy my stats, but just keep in mind that the more gear you get, the more unlikely it will be that the normal priority might not apply. But you're fine either way, right? At least this should help you with rings and trinkets, and hold on! We still have a few trinkets for you to aim for. When raiding, the best in slot by far are two specific trinkets that actually drop in the raid. Ashvane's Razor Coral and Ajara's Font of Power are by far the best ones to have, especially against single target bosses. One note here, for Ajara's Font of Power, you want to think of it as a pre-pot that has a cast time, so always pop it first before your opener, or during your downtime in the fight. Ashvane's Razor Coral is less straightforward, but it shouldn't be too difficult to understand that you are building up crit strike and you want it to apply when you have some cooldowns up. Other good trinkets, usually used in dungeons, are Vial of Animated Blood and Gore Crusted Butcher's Block. The trinkets are simple and more than that, you can farm them more than you can the raid ones. Or you can't, I mean, in these days you never know what kind of blood or unholy or frost sacrifices are in Jesus wants for us to get what we work for. I know you are there, four pants in a row, guys. I've been there. Well, still am, but let's talk about less depressing things and check the traits. To be fair, the traits are the same for both raids and dungeons, which I never thought I'd say this, but thank god for the lack of variety. And don't get me wrong, this is only because it's a real bitch to have to reset traits if you want to both raid and do dungeons at the same time. Hope Ian knows, I've sent letters already. Feshermite is the go-to. Stack it. Stack it seven times if you can. Just stack it, alright? This trait is what makes Unholy scale like crazy and it requires a bit to pull off some of the crazier bursts. Use it until Blizzard nerfs it or removes it because it's fun and we all know how long that lasts. Magus of the Dead is the next best thing and you want to stack this as well. It might be hard to have this three times and Feshermite three times as well, but if you are lucky with your Azerite, it can be done. Works better in raids than in mythics though. In mythics, you might want only two Magus of the Dead and have generic stat traits like Trade Winds and Meticulous Scheming instead above the three Feshermite. There are one or two more specific unholy traits you can go for, but I would recommend simming anything more than this. Generic stat traits are pretty good at higher eye level, since the levels of strength you will have will make all secondary scale like crazy. 
as far as essences are concerned, you still have two different builds, albeit with a bit of variety available when it comes to miners, but that's up to your discretion. We will recommend the following. Condensed Life Force Major for Raids with the Memory of Lucid Dreams and Essence of the Focusing Iris as Miners. Condensed is a very, very, very solid single target essence. Nothing to do with your class at all, actually. Good? Bad? You decide. Memory clearly has the strength of giving your rune refunds, which are amazing to begin with, and Iris, well, haste. Need I say more? As for dungeons, what better way to enable your spec to perform in 5-man PvE content than doing 10-man PvP content? Oh, that's right! Blood of the Enemy Major here. Crit is already crazy good, like I showed you before on my sims, making this the go-to best-in-slot major with the same miners, actually. Memory and Iris for the same arguments, even more relevant in Mythics, actually. Unholy is pure fun, and really, I cannot get enough of it, and it's so fun to get punished when you mess up, and a lot more rewarding to actually get rewarded when you nail that rotation, and yeah, you can check all of this on our stream, twitch.tv slash online. Yeah, we do this, we play with a lot of specs and test a lot of things before going into these guides, and we can do that all with you guys by running some dungeons and raids, so tune in! When opening on a boss, start with the Ajara Trinket if you have it, then Army of the Dead 2 seconds before the pool, pre-pot and it's go time! Outbreak first, Dark Transformation next, Festering Strike once or twice if you don't have Bloodlust here, then use Apocalypse followed by Unholy Frenzy. There are bits and bobs you can change and adapt on the opener depending if you have the trinket or not, if the bloodlust is popped or not. One thing is for sure though, you really want to use Army of the Dead with bloodlust though. With a normal bloodlust opener, no trinkets, festering once is ideal because the four wounds would come naturally because of the attack speed. If you have to wait for it, wait a bit because you never want to use apocalypse with only three wounds. When in normal single target situations, the most important thing to press is Outbreak for Virulent Plague if the debuff is not there or about to fall off. Next up is Death Coils when Sun Doom procs or to prevent runic power capping. Scored Strike only when the target has Festering Wounds on them. Festering Strike next to apply said wounds and Death Coil as a filler. The normal priority in AoE is very similar. Outbreak is still first, but Epidemic replaces the normal coil usage next. Death and Decay is extra next on the list, but more on this in a few seconds. Use Scorch Strike only in Death and Decay to make sure you are cleaving again, more on this in a second. Spam Epidemic whenever the above are not necessary, and you can still use Death Coils on Sun Doom procs, but that's it. Lastly, you use Scorch Strikes to burst wounds if nothing else is available and Festering Strikes to apply said wounds once more. Now let's talk about what makes Unholy such a powerhouse in Mythics and why they can pull those million DPS meters in MDI. It all revolves around Death and Decay and the talents that make bursting wounds pop AoE damage and of course Epidemic to top it off. Death and Decay has a very short duration and during that time you want to burst as many wounds as possible with an epidemic here and there to prevent runic power capping and to proc runic corruption which is also essential. Depending on the encounters and how your tank will pull, the rotation will always change and you need to adapt to it. What you want to know is that you want all your plagues and wounds and cooldowns to be popped before putting Death and Decay down, since those will just eat precious GCD time out of your already very short Death and Decay. Once you have all of that set up, ideally with wounds on as many mobs as you can, without overdoing it, usually 3 Festering Strikes can be enough, pop Death and Decay down and spam Score Strikes while keeping your Runic Power from capping with Epidemic. What this essentially does is deal the bursting damage that it's baseline for your spec with the dungeon talent build. It will also start proccing the Fester Might buffs, giving you crazy, crazy strength levels. 
It will require a bit of practice to nail everything down, since you will more often than not have to do this mid-pull or mid-combat or whatever way your tank will pull depending on whatever affixes you will have that specific week. As per our stats, and my stats mostly, I will keep the consumables crit related, but feel free to adjust to your own stat priorities as you like it. A cord of Critical Strike and Lava Lazuli will be your most used and most often used ones. Enchanting your rings and socketing crit are the easiest to do and please, for the love of god, don't be that guy that joins groups without this. It's just lazy and you're better than that. The weapon is easy since it's free. Yup, Rune of the Fallen Crusader is the best enchant in the game, and it's all yours, perks of being a DK, so really, you have Arthas to thank. Well, not really, cause Nerzul started the DK fiasco when in Warcraft 2 he took orc souls and placed them into human paladin bodies and... The flask is clearly strength and the potion is unbridled fury for pure single target or the basic strength for everything else. The food is consisted of the feast, primarily, and the McDonald's in case feasts are too expensive and... I mean, you are already saving on weapon enchants. Again, thanking Nerzul for making you OP and even giving you discounts and bargain sales on Sundays. Major shout out to the Accurist Discord channel for Death Knights, where the Death Knight boys and girls helped me understand a lot of the mechanics that weren't as straightforward at a first glance. So really, thank you so much guys. And don't forget, there are a lot more advanced tips and tricks that you can learn from the top DKs down there in the community. So go check it out if you want more in-depth unholy goodness. Also, a major thanks to our Patreons. God, this feels so good to see you guys keep supporting us with the little money you have to spend on those Vulpira race changes. So really, from the bottom of our hearts, we thank you. And of course, thank you for watching the video. Hope you liked it. See you next time. Take care.